Hi, two o'clock. Um, so just before we kick off, on a scale of one to ten, where, where ten is, I am a, what do you need? Two your badge. My badge. <laughs> where, ten, where 10 is I've got it and 1 is what the f <laughs> gamification who's sitting on the 1 side like huh? okay who's sitting on the 10 side and you should be up here talking Okay, who's sitting kind of in the middle? There's a word you've heard about it. Yeah. All right. So, on the same scale of one to ten, I want you to oh, chatbots. Who knows and nailed chatbots on ten? You've got it. Chatbots are sorted. Cool. Good. No, that's no, great because you can check if I'm right. On one, what the fuck? No, it kind of in the middle. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is take one minute before I start, find your partners, and if you were a chatbot that had to implement gamification, you were a chatbot that had to implement gamification right now, tell the person next to you how you would do it. Okay, 30 seconds. Go. Um, I'd like to leave it open for now. Gee, <laughs> okay. okay, go for it. 30 seconds. If you were a chatbot that had to implement gamification, what would you do? And Okay, about 15 seconds more. Okay, five. Okay, awesome. Who got some cool answers out? What did you say? So, just because the microphone is here. <laughs> yes. Um, so for me, that would be from the chatbot, if you want to provide a gamification, which is an experience, probably you will have, in any case, to redirect them somewhere else, unless you want to do it within the little column. But that is not a great experience. So probably the chatbot, artificial intelligence, uh, prompted by keywords that we pre-criteria kind of inserted, cool. will prompt it to another Mobby site where you have a whole fun. Cool. Fantastic. Who else? That's great. Who else? Got an answer. Go for it. What would you do? This is not, okay, this is not good. Okay, so we were discussing, um, we were thinking maybe like a point system based off of um, how close you could get somebody uh, to their goal, like to help them, because chatbots have different sequences. So instead of taking me from like point A to point B, maybe you take me, you know, 75% of the way to my answer. Cool. So like from a customer service standpoint, you get me closer to uh, what I want to get to, and then I get points or something like that. Awesome. Thank you, brilliant. Who else, what would you do? No? No. Way. No? Okay. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like you... Oh, you've got someone. Oh, okay. Um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to... Um, that's what we're doing. Turning digital marketing onto its head. That's what I'm going to try and talk about today. Try. Because by the time I'm finished, it would have changed. Because it was moving pretty quickly. I'd like you, if you want to, to meet our chatbot. Okay, actually, meet our one. So, is a QR code on your table? If you have it, if you don't have one, there's one up there. And I would really encourage you to in chat to our chatbot while I'm speaking. Yes. Okay, because it, it, there's a lot of research that shows that when you're watching TV, on average, there's two more active devices going on at the same time, which is why TV is becoming boring, because it's all push content. Okay, this will take you to a web page, so if you're not, if you don't have data, you're not online, you're going to struggle today, that's all good. And I'm going to pull in this first question in a moment. So, Veo walks with me while I speak. You can run ahead if you want to. You don't have to. Entirely up to you. Okay. So, let's dive a little bit. Here is, oh, sorry. Go for it. All right. 
So if you have an Apple and an iPhone, or you have Bixby on your, on your um, Samsung, you can just use your, your camera, and it'll automatically scan in. They've done it up. If not, you're old there, and if not, I'll give it to you at the end again. Okay, so who am I? I'm Darren. What's my why? My why? My why is something quite big. It's a word you guys speak about a lot in marketing. And I think that when we speak about the why, it kind of feels like the challenge I gave you. If you were a chatbot, how would you gamify? Create the why. The what? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's all good word. Let's have a look. So as part of the company, as part of what I do, our why, our reason for being and what we do, and we, we do gamification, and I'll explain what it is in a moment, is we are about crafting purposeful play. Why? Okay, so anybody seen um, the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice with, with um, Nicolas Cage? Has anybody seen that? Sorcerer's Apprentice? With Nicolas Cage? Yeah. So, isn't it, isn't it awesome? If you don't watch kind of movies like that or animations, you need to, especially if you're in marketing. It's something you're going to have to do. Thanks to Pixar, thanks to Steve Jobs. Um, okay, so in the Sorcerer's Apprentice, there is a scene where the, where the master wizard, uh, who is Nicolas Cage, is talking to the apprentice, and he goes, and the apprentice is like a science whiz. This kid's like a science genius. And um, the, the wizard goes, so is magic science or magic? Oh, sorry, the kid asks the wizard, is magic science or magic? And the wizard's answer is, yes and yes. <laughs> so it kind of causes a bit of confusion. So what happens is, Part of what we do is we're about this word crafting, and crafting, it's never a finished, a finished end. It's a science. It's always proving itself. It's about becoming better. It's about crafting. Our workplace is about crafting. You're only as good as your last marketing campaign. Yeah? That's as good as, good as you are. So if you're not crafting your skill, you're not getting better at what you do, you're dead in the water. And going back to education, I played quite, quite substantially in the education space. They have done research that shows if a degree is still important, if a degree, three or four years degree, is still important, in order to keep up with the changing technologies, a student would need to be able to do an entire three-year degree with all the experience in six months to keep up with the changing technology. Because what they learn in year one is outdated by year two and obsolete by the end of year three. So you're getting a degree that is outdated before you even get into your third year. Okay, and marketing guys would tell you that more than anyone else. Okay, so the first thing is about crafting. crafting. It's about continually getting better. You're only as good as your last one. Second thing, purposeful. This is a word that's bandied about quite a lot. This return on investment. Don't be afraid of ROI. ROI is great. Return on investment is quite simple. It goes, what were they doing before you engaged with them? What are they doing after you engaged with them? And subtract the two, return on investment. Simple. It's not more difficult than that. You can throw as many formulas as you want into it, but that's it. So, we did, we're doing some work with the client in the learning space, and we're getting a 7% click-through. We're not, we're not marketing, we're learning. So we sit down with, with some marketing guys the other day, and they're like, you know what? It was linked to this project. We're getting 3% click-through. So we thought we were doing really badly, and they're going, we're happy with 3%, we're getting 7 I'm like, oh my God, we're doing something right. And, and, and of course, we're learning as we go. Okay. So we craft, we make it purposeful, and then... Has anybody ever, probably in your teenage years, not slept for like three days? The rebels, you know? Has anybody ever done that? You're kind of up on a Monday or what's going on, and then it's Tuesday, and then it's kind of Wednesday. Two or three days. Anybody ever made it without sleeping? Without. Anybody done it? Hey? Without or with? Without sleeping, yeah. Anybody done two days without sleeping? Yes. Okay. After those two days... Are you the most amazing person to be around? <laughs> You're in the best mood. Everything's awesome, right? No, no. Okay, so let me ask you this question. Does anyone know what the impact on your brain is if you don't play? Anyone want to venture a guess? What is the impact on your brain if you don't play? 
stress, less creativity. It's as serious as if you don't sleep. So by not playing, it impacts your creativity, your ability to solve problems, and your ability to perform the same way as if you don't sleep. And when do you get taught to stop playing? The day you start school. Yeah. (laughs) The day you send your kids to preschool is the day they get taught to stop playing and start getting educated to get into a world that requires creativity, problem solving, fluid intelligence, and everything we do stops them from that. So we encourage people to play, and we call play work your job, and we convert your job to be fun. So I'll give you an example. We did some work with a call center overseas about two years ago. They had a problem with people coming late to work. I know it doesn't happen in South Africa, it happens overseas. Um, and they tried the fire route, they tried the scary route, didn't work. So we said, okay, if the target was 100, the number of 100, if they reached 90 out of 100, not even their target, just 90 out of 100, because they were getting on average 75. 90 of 100, and, and please don't worry about the dollars and the cents, just because I can't really give all the figures, I can't remember them all, but get the gist, because it worked. If they reached 90, they'd get a little squirt gun, just a little water squirt gun. <laughs> If they achieved 100, which was the target, their service level, what they got paid to do, they'd get the bigger squirt done. Mm. But if they reached 110, they would get, who's your daddy? Squirt gun of note. And when you have that squirt gun, you have the right to squirt anyone who comes late to work as they walk down the aisle of fame. Latism dropped by 42% over three months. Mm. I don't want to get wet. <laughs> then right. come to work on time. Okay? And then it progressed. What if my car, my car tire bursts, my child, my, father, my husband, my wife, blah, blah, blah. So we created the get out of squirt free card, which hung around your neck. There was a, there was a, a team of 100 people. There were four cards. And guess where the cards were kept? Manager's office. You don't get wet? Go explain to your manager why you're late. That's a bit punitive. Well, then come to work on time. And if you've got a good enough excuse, your manager should understand. Okay? And so it progressed. So this is kind of making what I do fun, apparently. Because you saw a 32% increase in calls, which is what they're after. Pretty good. Decrease latism, increase calls. Because we just made what it was fun. What did it cost the company? Some squirt guns. That's pretty cool, eh? Because do you know that the most studied research research since the 60s is motivation in the workplace? The most studied research. Motivation in the workplace? And do you know that the most ignored research is motivation in the the workplace? (laughs) And do you know that by rewarding people to do actions, by giving them stuff like 13th checks, you know, cool little gadgety things, is the worst kind of reward that you can give for sustained behavior? And it's only good for a marketing launch. Launch. It's not good for sustainability. And how do you reward our people with? 13th checks. Okay. Watch this. If this works. Thank you.
That's successful. Yeah. How's that for a marketing campaign? Because all Pokemon Go is, is, a, is a continuous marketing campaign. And what stood out the most? Or, or any other stats stand out for anyone? Like something just went boom. Go for it. Or you're kind of overwhelmed by what you saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, how do we do that? I'll tell you in a moment. Any other stats stand out for anyone? 15, 56 million downloads. Why? Why did they stand out for you? Such a big number. Do you know how many people go back to a download? An app. Do you know how many people go back to apps? About 3%. So if you want someone to download an app on, your, on their device, you've got 3% of them going back to it. Do you know how many people go back to a like on Facebook? They like your page on Facebook? Do you know how many people go back to that? 1%. So, the world's moving away from apps, we're moving to chatbots. Mm. Because chatbots you don't have to download, you can engage with. But still a pretty impressive number, even if 3% go back to that. Okay. The gifts, did anybody pick up the gifts? How many gifts were given since May this year? By 2.2 billion. This, okay, what is a gift? Okay, this, isn't, this is a trick question, this is a real serious question. What is a gift? A reward? Okay, but think about it. Christmas time, what do you get? Gifts. Easter. Birthdays. What do you get? Gifts. You get presents. So how much do you, so, so 2.2 billion gifts were given. Who gave the gifts? Hey? I'm oh, sorry, I can't hear you. No, they didn't give the gifts. They provided the platform to give the gifts. Who gave the gifts? The players, 2.2 billion gifts given by players in six months. Who owns that platform? Not, I'm, not talking, I'm, not, I'm talking, not talking about the, the, the software. Who owns that platform? Pokemon Go, the players. What are the, the gifts? Is, weapons and... Um, it could be weapons. Ah, okay. the gifts could so be, within the game. Anything All that's right. been provided in the game. Okay, I understand. And if the gift isn't there, who asks for it? Yeah, obviously you're the user. The player. I need a gift for this, and the company creates it. Wow. Mm. It's as simple as that. You talk about why, Jen. You talk about all these generations. We are two generations past millennials. Mm. Two. Next gen, we call them digital darlings. They are the most informed generation of all time. Digital darlings. They are born doing this. And if you think the millennials were spoiled, the digital darlings have Amazon. There is a generation after the digital darlings that are now called the alphas. And the alphas will be the first generation in history. They're from a 2010. First generation in history that will become cyborgs. They will be the generation that not, don't get tattoos, but will get technology put into them. Mm. That, that, it's not if, it's when. It's happening now. They are, it's, it's already happening. Okay? There are, how can you market... To, human thought thinking marketing ways to a generation of digital darlings and cyborgs Ish. you can't but good luck keep doing what you're doing right because <laughs> Einstein said something pretty clear he's like if you keep doing what you're doing and you expect to get different results you're insane but that's what Einstein said not me I won't claim that one okay so let's have a look Gamification pulls us all together in a moment. But let's have a look at some of these stats that I have found. Buzzwords that are going on at the moment. The cool buzzwords. Okay. Which buzzwords do you see? 
I know there's eight, there's eight nine. Which ones, which ones do you see? Let's talk about the ones that interest you. Shout them out. Yeah. AI. What is artificial intelligence? I know I see if you're listening previously. What's AI? Yes? So I work a machine <laughs> that actually keeps on learning That's with a uh, battling of algorithms behind. Stunning. It's a machine that keeps learning by its own algorithms. Last year in November, Google launched a new translation app. Yeah, there's lots of translation apps, yes. What Google didn't see coming, what the world got a bit of a fright with, and Google kind of pooped its pants a little bit, was this. The translation app. It would this is how it started learning. It would translate in Afrikaans, in English, I throw you with the ball. No, that's not wrong. That's wrong. The app, without any human intervention, the machine, no human intervention. And if you missed it, I'll say it one more time. No human did anything. The machine decided it could translate it better. So what it did was it rewrote its own code by itself with no human intervention and what it then did was it took the translation from English to Afrikaans then it did it English to 168 languages Afrikaans to 168 languages 168 to the power of 168 and in the time that it spat the answer it gave you the translation because it picked up the nuance AI baby no you can't keep up with that you just can't. And my prediction in the next two years is a new job coming onto the market. And I'm predicting it. It's called an AI coach, a chatbot coach, AI coach. Yes, like we have human coaches and life coaches and all these beautiful things in the workplace, we are going to have to have people who coach AI computers. Okay, what's they going to do to your marketing? I have absolutely no idea okay because as humans we are not overly predictable always excepting often okay because that's what ai is about okay so don't be too afraid of ai the chatbots that we're speaking about that you can be experiencing that you can grow with are about ai so can you imagine a bot that pushes content to you the way that you want to consume content when you need to consume content for the moment that you need content through a digital glass that's embedded in your eye so that you don't have to go to school. Because school's about crystallized intelligence. You are now dealing with what's called fluid intelligence. And fluid intelligence is the ability to find, access, consume, use, and forget content for the moment that you want it. Do not remember it. Your frontal cortex is too small to contain too much content, so don't contain too much content there. Don't worry about your long-term memory. Your humanity is big enough to pull you through. When you cram your frontal cortex, which is what exams do, you remember 8% of what goes in three months later. So on this conference, these two days, hopefully I'm the 8% that you remember. Because <laughs> that's just what it is. Okay, another topic. Pick another topic. Anyone? What is that? And what is that? Getting people to notice you on their search engine. By? By? How? How do you do that? Using um, Google keywords, like analytics and stuff like that. So Google keywords through analytics. Yeah. Okay, and how are we doing with that on average? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because what does Google do as soon as you nail it down? What does Google do? Changes the algorithm. Mm. Because if they didn't, you'd get bored and drop off, and I'll show you the scenario flow in a moment. Okay, so yes, SEO, interesting. It's going to change if it hasn't changed already. Cool, another topic. What? Uh, that's, not, that's not on there. Please pick one. <laughs> pick one that's on there. I don't know. I didn't do enough study on that. <laughs> another, one, another one's on there. Buzzword. What's that? Uh, well, we are, from a commercial point of view, we went 
from uh, a single channel to cross channel to multi channel to omni channel. But I wonder why we don't have relevancy com commerce, which is actually more the future. So talk, so talk to me about this concept of that. So omni-channel, so you went from single channel to multi-channel to omni-channel? So basically from a, a backstage point of view, let me put the bottom. <laughs> the backstage point of view was that we were working in silos. And now, thanks to, for example, software like CRM, we're able to matching the consumer experience with what is happening backstage. So that is like omni-channel lived at its top. But now, thanks to CRMs, we're going through... A relevancy mark where we can target the individual, as you said, as they grow through their journey. Brilliant, brilliant. So, so I wanted to and get your yeah. That's so, so these two for me, omni-channel and customer journey go together. Yeah, and it's a customer journey that we are most interested in gamification. The customer journey. We start even that's where the interest us the most. Well, second most. I'll tell you the most. Omni-channel is pretty intriguing because we tend to forget that we have a whole. A whole market of non-tech people out there. A whole market of non-tech. And we have digital tech. We have both. And how do we pull the two together? There was a really good launch by another shoe company in a mall. When you walked in the mall through NFC, where your phone goes beep, 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 yep. They were, they were given a, 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 a countdown timer. And they said, if you get to this shoe store, I can't remember the shoe. In the time... On this countdown timer, the time you put the shoe on the counter, whatever on this clock, you'll get that discount. Go. It was a Puma. The, they got an 85% discount. One guy made it. He went tearing through the mall. But think about what they did. High tech, low tech. People just saw people tearing through this mall to get to a shop. So that is a way of omni-channel. Although it's not our, I'm sitting with five devices, it's an omni-channel. It's more than one, talking to one person in more than one way. And it's very interesting about humans, is humans need constant reminder. They need to be constantly reminded of where they are, what they are. And then you're bored with Facebook, or move on to YouTube. You're bored with YouTube, or move on to... Because really there's no difference between Facebook, LinkedIn, none of them, they're all the same. They're all after video, audio, text, all the same thing. They're just looking at different markets slightly, but yeah. All the same. Okay. All right. The one discussion that came up earlier about education, what I want to pick up was micro moments. A seven minute video is a very long video. Very long video. However, seven minutes of gameplay or seven hours of gameplay is a very short amount of time. Video games. World of Warcraft, 40 million active users per month. That's pretty cool. How long do the average play for? Six and a half hours. Out of 40 million active per month, on average they play for six and a half hours. It's a second shift. You work for your first, you go home, and then you play for your second. All right? That doesn't feel like seven minutes, but for someone to sit down for seven minutes, oh, good luck with that. Yeah? Why are we trying to do things the way that we've always done them if we're expecting different results? Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive a little bit to comms bombs <laughs> into gamification. So, do you want to know why no one reads your email? I'll tell you why. Because there are approximately, where are the emails? Into the bottom. Uh, 187 million emails are sent every minute. How long have I been talking? About 10 minutes. So, 1 billion, 300 million emails have been sent in the time that I've been talking to you. So if I don't reply to your email, it's because, trust me, I'm not interested in what you have to say, because you are one of the billion emails going out. How about text messages? 18 million text messages go out every one minute of the day. Every one minute. 18 million. You want my attention? Don't do it the way you've been doing it. Uh, Instagram, 174,000 Instagrams. I'm trying to see this. So there is a YouTube here. 4.3 million videos viewed, 72 hours of video is uploaded onto YouTube every one minute of the day. Okay, let me put that into perspective. You start tomorrow morning at 12.01. So you go for three days just watching YouTube with no potty break, no food break, no stop, no focus. You just watch YouTube. 
from 1 1201 for the next 72 hours and you would have consumed one minute of video uploads onto YouTube. Why should I watch your videos? What? what? No, I don't know either. Can't think of a good enough reason. Okay. We are bombarded, bombarded by comms. But there it is, light in the tunnel. There is light. Okay. There's a lot going on in our world. And especially if our concentration spans are dipping, and especially if things are changing, it's not because we are becoming stupid, it's because we're becoming more refined in what we, what's interesting us. And if it doesn't interest us, we won't watch it. Okay. So, I'd like to define what we call gamification, but to do it, I'd like to break down a few different discussions. The first thing I'd like to say is games. Games are activities that you engage with for amusement. And a lot of people mix up gamification with serious games. Education especially, they think that because they put a game in Leadership 101 training, like Monopoly, they think it's gamified. It's not, it's a serious game. Games that we do for amusement, golf, Monopoly, video games, there's no real outcome to the game other than value to us, or if I want to compete against a friend, but there's no reason to play other than choice. Okay, so what's the best way to get kids to stop playing? The easiest, besides shouting at them and using your authoritarian Hitler, Hitler way of doing it, what's the simplest, easiest way to get kids to stop playing? Showing something? Something to, to, to simulate the curiosity art way? Yes, that's one way. There is another. Hey? Bribe them? There's, <laughs> there's an easier way. Go up to the kids who are playing and go, oh, Look how well you're playing. You're doing so well. Keep playing. You go do that to a kid. They stop playing immediately. They get shy. But all of a sudden, their game is being measured. How they play has been put onto a scale of 1 as to 10. It's becoming measured. You are performance managing them. <laughs> It is consistently proven, this. What happens every three to six months in the workplace? Uh, uh, what? Performance appraisal. The very thing that stops people from doing what they want to do, the very thing, is the very thing in business, and we can't work out why, according to the SPDP, we have a 9% actively engaged workforce. You can't work it out. Keep doing performance. You go. Okay. Games, activities that people do for amusement. Then we have this thing called fun. Fun is what keeps you engaged. I do not understand why people chase a little ball around probably four kilometers of grass fairly often to knock it into a little hole with a flag and then go have a drink. I get the drink after. I don't get that kind of four hours in between. <laughs> All those little guys, you have to catch those little wiggly worms and put them onto the end of, and gals, not only guys, but they put them on the end of a little hook that they prick themselves with, you throw them into water and sit. I don't understand that. But for some people, that's fun. Now, when you reward someone in your marketing campaign by, giving, by forcing them to do what they like to do, they will stop liking what they do. So, you go to a golfer and you say to the golfer, I'm going to measure on your performance review every three to six months if you've played golf. You have to because your performance review and your increase relies on it. First three months, lovely. Then the pressure's kick in. And by nine months, they will hate golf. It's a very intriguing, the human is just a very intriguing character. Okay, so we have games and we have fun. Okay, I'm sorry, this next slide is quite wordy. Um, there's probably better ways to say it, but we, we, we'll live with it. Okay, gamification. So through the research, there are eight key elements that are consistent in most games, which I'll tell you in a moment. I'll get to that in a moment. So what gamification does is it takes those elements, takes it out of games, and puts it into non-gaming environments. OK? 
Okay? It's those elements that keep people hooked. It's those elements that keep them playing. It's those elements that keep people going back to the games. Takes those, puts them in non-gaming environments, and does it measurably. And ultimately, it's to change behavior. China just did something very good. I'm not measuring the merits of it, but what they did is they've gamified their social system. Which means that if you are a good corporate social citizen, you get decreased interest rates, you get better home loans, you get better stuff in your cars, you get better education for your kids, they get into better schools. If you are a bad corporate social citizen, you will be blocked from buying cars. Your debt, your debt goes up. Everything They have gamified being a good corporate social citizen. Problem is who defines what a good corporate social citizen is. That's where the, the problem kicks in. So whether right or wrong, that's not discussion here. That's what they've done. They've built in rewards for living a good corporate social citizen life within the Chinese perspective. Okay. So gamification does this. It takes your marketing campaign and says, what is it that you're trying to do? Now, I'm not the first person to say this today. I've heard many say it. What does the end result look like? Are you sure that's the end result that you want? Is that really what you're looking for? Okay, how do you take a player, a learner, a, per a person, on a journey through experience? Experiential places. So they get to the result. But you don't point them to the result. They get there of their own accord. How do we do that? And that's what, that's what you're seeking to answer. So look at Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go says... They have an end result. I suppose, you know, $1.8 billion is a good end result. But they just make the engagement to get their fun. And let me tell you, it's not all about one type of engagement. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do. Competitions aren't so good. Competitions don't work well for sustainability. Because you have what's called a zero-sum game. Which means someone wins. And someone loses. So, as a kid... I used to play video games. There used to be things called arcades. Arcades had a lot of video games in them. And we used to steal 20 cents and go play arcade games. And, and what would happen is I'd walk up to a machine and, and I'd get to go play a new game and I'd see this leaderboard. And I'd see the number one guy on the leaderboard had like 4,848,243,028 points. And I'd walk away. Because the chances of me competing to get to there, I'd have to mortgage my dad's house. Didn't have enough money for that. So instead of trying to get there, I'd walk away from the game. When the reward that you are offering, the points, the badges, the, the, the um, you know, lanyards, the, the, when, that, when you are offering that to a person and what you are offering they don't want, they will then find ways to actively not engage with what you're offering. Because they don't want what you're offering. So when you go into a company and they give you like a whole full-on stack of rewards, yeah, you could win any of these, but I can't feed my kids. What's in there is of no value to them. So they, they, are going to, they are then going to actively disengage so that they don't get that reward. Or how about the single parent who has two kids at home, the company is so proud of them, they win and they give them a cruise for two, for four nights. No, thank you. What do I do with my kids for four nights? Who do I take with me? That's awkward. How does it transpire? No, it doesn't. So I'd rather not engage because I don't want what you're offering. And gamification seeks to change that reward schedule and, and through a different kind of um, field. So have a look at this. In our world, in the world in which I play in gamification, this is our heartbeat. If you work with us and you want to measure return on investment for us, we measure the flow of the engager. We call them players. Because when you're in flow, 10 hours, feels like 30 seconds. Where does that go? When you're out of flow, 30 seconds, feels like 10 hours. You know that moment you're about to walk into your boss's office because they said they want to see you? I want to see you. Three o'clock afternoon. You're like, oh my God, and I hop two o'clock, one minute past two. That, you know, it's just that every time you look at the clock, the time's going backward, you're out of flow. So this is the way flow works. And this is where marketing, I believe, has to shift its focus away from a single event because I don't have time for your single events. 
Okay? The first thing is the challenges. On the y-axis, there is a challenge. There is something you would like someone people to do. I want you to click this button on the screen. Challenge. Technology is the most funniest thing. Most people text often. Let me tell you, you launch a chatbot, and now, and you tell them that they're talking to a computer, all of a sudden they forget how to text. How do I do it? Text. What do I say? You answer the question. What's the question? Um, how are you feeling? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Strange. Okay. Challenge. On the x-axis, you have this thing called skills. Another word is competence. We refer to it recently as more perceived competence, the ability to, to do something, perceived. Because if the challenge exceeds the perceived competence, the player gets bored, uh, gets anxious, and drops off. So, I've given you a little picture on, on your tables. It's a picture of Digicon South Africa. That's an, augment, that's an augmented reality picture. If you download the HP app and you scan it, You'll see something, but don't do it now. We'll do it a little later. But there's three steps involved in that. You've got to download it. You've got to put your username in. You've got to put your email in. You're then going to launch. There's three steps. Whew. No, challenge far too big. Massive anxiety drop off. The other side of it is my perceived skill exceeds the challenge. This is where I believe marketing's kind of stuck between the two. We want you to open a Coke can. Ooh, that's no challenge in that. Open 10 in a minute. You've just increased the skill, the, the challenge for the skill. This is our workforce, most of them. They have been doing their jobs for so long, and there's no challenge in their job anymore. This is a problem with the education department, our education around the world. We do the same things every year, year on year. I get 20 textbooks, I've got to read them all, I've got to write an exam, and I level up just to more textbooks and more difficult discussions and more confusing content that doesn't make sense to what messages I'm getting on my phone. So boredom kicks off. Now, when you're on flow, what you are doing is you are increasing the challenge and studying the perceived skill simultaneously so that a person in their own time, in their own way, for their own reasons, can stay in flow to engage with your message your market, what it is you want them to achieve. But you are one of 148 million emails I got every minute of the day. So the challenge far exceeds the perceived skill of opening an email. And most times people are so pissed off, where the f did you get my, my, my name from? How did you get my details? Poppy act. Yeah? You gotta change the way we do things a little bit. This is a heartbeat. This is a heartbeat. And the one thing I'll say about gamification strategy is this. A gamification strategy lasts for three months at max. Maybe six at a push. Why? Because humans change. And what excites you today doesn't excite you tomorrow. Why? Because your perceived skill has increased. Make sense? Am I kind of on a track? No. Oh my God, what is he talking about? Okay, let's have a look. I'd like to offer you the eight elements of games. Okay? The eight elements of games are there in our world so that we keep people in flow. All right, so we'll go through them fairly quickly. First one, I want to start with narrative. Okay. Anybody heard of Simon Sinek? Simon Sinek. It, you know him personally? No. Oh, come on. Anybody heard of Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs. Yeah, when, you know, Steve, good mate of mine. Was a good mate of mine. <laughs> In my dreams. Um, okay, so Simon Sinek and Steve Jobs did something very similar. They spoke about the marketing of their products. Well, now Simon obviously leads, you know, doesn't have a product, but talks about it, through a why. Why is a purpose? Why is something bigger than I am? Why is it that people can sit for two or three hours on a Friday or Thursday afternoon and watch a movie? Sit and watch. We do it. We love it. Why can't we do it the, on the workplace? 
Because most movies talk back to our why, whether it be fantasy, I love fantasy, I take, you know, engage with fantasy, or it be, um, you know, chick flicks or, you know, sub dramas or what have you. It talks back to something in us that's bigger than what we are that is important to us. So we're doing a gamification strategy at the moment with the clients for learning. The learning is with an entry level workforce that's literally salespeople, and their job is very difficult. Why? Because they are two hours on a bus to work in the morning, they work for eight hours, two hours on a, a bus on the way home at night. What can they do to change their lives? So they've lost all possibilities. They've lost hope. So we've, the company wants them to learn. They want them to study, you know, to better themselves. They're not interested. So we've built a strategy that says, okay, we will meet you with chatbots for three minutes a week, three times, nine minutes a week. And that will get you some content out about what you need to study. We'll give you a really cool challenge. And at the end of five weeks, you'll look back and show us a purpose that you found or possibility that you've unlocked in yourself, that you've found over the past five weeks. Happens eight times. At the end of that 40-week journey, eight times five, you've got eight possibilities that you can bet to yourself. And now what the company does is they invest in a learning program because you've unlocked the possibility of you so that you can bet to yourself and the company's giving you what you're asking for. And guess who wins? Well, who wins in that? The company? Because you're doing a good job and the player. So we've seen, we've launched this about eight weeks ago. We've seen a 55% retention of knowledge in eight weeks. We've seen now a 13% click rate in opening our emails that we sent to them, knowing the emails aren't pretty good. Yeah. And we've seen about an 8% increase in sales out of 250 people. It's not too bad, eight weeks. And now we're bettering our strategy. So what we've done though is we've started a Story. Anybody heard of the hero's journey? Hero's journey? Isn't that cool? I watch myths and monsters. Myths and monsters? And what did you, what, what, in your mind, hero's journey, what is it? Um, Can you remember? It's, it's the, the eight or so different steps that the hero goes through. Yes. Um, he's kind of outside of society yeah. and then he comes back, he tries to solve something, he goes <laughs> on a quest. Stunning. Um, and then finds something out about himself and then fails and succeeds and then comes back and changes society again. Come on, man. It's the optimum journey. So the hero's journey, I can't remember who, right now it's messed up my mind. Hero's journey simply is it's all the major epic stories of all time. It's been studied. And there's a common theme again through all of them. One, I wake up in the morning, I'm in society, I don't know I'm a hero. Two, I meet a mentor. They tell me I'm a hero. Three, I don't want to engage. Four, something happens that I've got to engage. Five, I step over. I meet the villains, I meet the characters, I meet the story. I then practice and I punch and I practice and I think I'm getting there and then I die. It's a massive ordeal. And then I rise. And in my rising, I find the Alexia, and I grab it, and now I'm going to change society. Which of your marketing messages are like that? The very research that shows that keeps people engaged. Come on, what's the story? Narrative is super powerful. And if people can hook their story onto yours, you won't need to do the marketing. They will do it for you. Pokemon Go has an awesome story. It's a narrative. You can die. You can rise. You can help. Has anybody seen Ready Player One? If you go one, watch one movie after this, go watch Ready Player One. Hey? There's also another one. Sorry, there's also another one, but it's an animation, Next Generation, which is also in Cyber. Yes, Robot. Next Gen. Yes, with, yeah. with that little Next girl. Gen. Next Gen, yes. Next Gen, yeah? Okay. It's very intriguing. Okay, that's narrative. Make your story a story. Make your campaign a story. Okay, next. We have what are called types of play and expressions of fun. There are 10 different expressions of fun. There are about 12 different types of play. Rough and tumble, dream play, or imagination play, messy play, all these different types of play that we can use, and we don't do any of it. We expect people to be creative and understand our marketing messages and the very thing they get told not to do in work is to create, to be innovative. They get told not to do that until every year's, until every year's um, uh, strategy sessions. And then they have to create. Haven't built that muscle. Okay. 
Rules, always good for working. Motivation, Dan Pink. Aesthetics, dynamics, mechanics, and types of play. Please. And the reason I'm rushing about five minutes, but I want to show you this next video. It's the most epic video of all time, I think. Um, mechanics, points, badges, and leaderboards are mechanics. They don't work unless they're linked to a why and something far more powerful than what they're used for. At the moment, they're only used for points, badges, and leaderboards. And when you have more points than I have and I can't reach your points, I'm not interested. I'm not even going to engage. Lost my excitement. Watch this. A mediados del 2013, la industria del arte en España sufrió uno de los golpes más grandes de todos los tiempos. El gobierno decidió cambiar el impuesto de los espectáculos teatrales del 8 al 21%, logrando la mayor sangría de espectadores que se recuerde. Un 30% menos de espectadores en tan solo un año. La gente se volcó a consumir entretenimiento probando masivamente como los propuestas americanos. Ante esa realidad, la compañía independiente de comedia teatraneo decidió decidió tomárselo con humor e inventar algo. Pay per laugh, the first comedy shows where you only pay for what you consume. We fitted each seat with a facial recognition system that detects the smile and proposed the following deal to spectators. Entrance will be totally free. If the show produces no laughs, you don't pay anything. However, if you laugh, you have to pay for each smile. Each smile produced is worth 30 euro cents, something that in this day and age is quite a reasonable price. <laughs> At the end of the show, the spectator could check their laughter account before paying and even share it on social networks. And so that no one would cry for having laughed more than they could afford, the maximum amount to pay was 80 laughs for 24 euros. The average price of the ticket increased by 6 euros. The system was covered by the main national media outlets, and this produced 35% more spectators. Each paper laugh show produced 28,000 euros more ticket money than was normally taken. Currently, the system is being copied in other theatres in Spain. A mobile phone app was created as a system of payment, and the first season ticket was launched for the number of laughs, not shows. We should also not write off the paper cry. Or paper what the fuck system. <laughs> or maybe not. Pay per laugh. The first comedy shows where you only pay for what you consume. Genius. Absolute genius. They chose to be there. They chose, on average, to pay six euros, which is about 120 rand more per ticket. They chose. They did it with a big smile on their face. One of the tricks that we've got to dive into. So, let me just go there. So, this is a framework that we use. It's called the Purposeful Play Portal. Okay. You can, if on our bot, it's in our bot as well. You're welcome to try and use it. Um, it's got to be strategic. What you do has to be purposeful. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it? You've got to be crafted. You've got the skills. The last thing is it's got to be played. And people play when there's curiosity, and people play when it's fun, and people play when the purpose is bigger than what they are. Cool. And that's our bot if you missed it. Any questions? Do I have time for questions? Any questions? But you can clap first. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Because it's all on camera. So I just... <laughs> all right. Have you ever had as a project uh, to, let's say, collaborate on a construction of a website, but using gamification? So do you want the website gamified, or do you want the project gamified? The website project. So our website, what we're currently building, our current website, uh -huh. it hasn't live yet. We've created Veo. Veo is our bot. When you land on a website, because it's been built, the bot, go, uh, the bot goes, hi, welcome to my home. Mm. Because people will spend time in your home. You invite friends to your home. Not strangers. And every one of our different pages, it's going to be a standard looking web page, but every page is a different room in the home. So the blog is the library. The, the, um, what we sell is the fridge. The chat rooms is the outside braai barbecue area. And at every page, there's like, welcome to this part of my home. So why are you here? What does this remind you about in your home? 
Our entire web page is not based on what we do. When it launches, our entire web, base, web page is based on your story. Because once I know your story, then Veo, my bot, can help you navigate what's important on my web page to you if there's anything important. And can you imagine a web page that goes, right now, what you're looking for, what you told me, we can't help you. We've got some friends who can. What do you say? No, but you're giving your potential lead away. Absolutely, because I can't help you. I want to build trust. I want you to come back to my home where you welcome in my home. So that's what we're doing with the web page. We're doing something similar for another client where they're moving away from training courses to an experience of learning. That's what we've done. Again, trying to link it to the person's story. Okay. Another question. There were a few hands. hope you haven't forgotten them all. I don't think I answered it all at once. Questions? Oh. Okay, then. Very good. Thank you.